there's a, an orientation toward the fact that people who tend to come on the second day have that greater traditional orientation to begin with. But also, what I want to do is, and this is really what I want to gauge, I want to get a sense from you if this is the kind of experience you want to continue to have on the second day, or if you are ready for something different on the second day. Um, it's very, very hard to figure that one out without the feedback of the people who are here on the second day. So I encourage you to send me an email. You can share a quick word with me uh, you know, after the service if you like. But that's the part that I really want to hear about. Is, is this the kind of experience that you would like to continue to have on the second day? If you have thoughts about the first day, again, those can be shared you know, with me or with others. But I, I think I've made myself pretty clear, which I hope I have. Amy Krauss Rosenthal. Amy Krauss Rosenthal. I see a head nodding already. How many of you recognize that name? Amy Krauss Rosenthal. Not too many of you here. Well, Amy was an author of children's and adult books. She made some short films along the way, and she was a radio host, too. And she did some incredible, if somewhat quirky, quirky things during the course of her all-too-short lifetime. Among the extraordinary things Amy did just 10 days before she passed away last March was to write an op-ed that appeared in the New York Times uh, uh, the op-ed page under the title, You May Want to Marry My Husband. Now, it was called a love letter to her husband, Jason, and it was a love letter but born of that love, Amy recognized that her husband deserved another partner with whom he could share his life following her death. I don't think the answer is going to be too different from when I asked you if you knew the name Amy Krauss Rosenthal. Any of you remember reading that op-ed in the Times? Oh, more of you did then. You should have remembered Amy's name. Okay. I don't know how you felt at the time, but boy, that one was a very, very tough read. Amy's conclusion, written to Jason and to that eventual partner, was this. I am wrapping this up on Valentine's Day, and the most genuine non-vase-oriented gift I can hope for is that the right person reads this, finds Jason, and another love story begins. I'll leave this intentional empty space below as a way of giving you two the fresh start you deserve. And that was the way that op-ed ended, with empty space in the New York Times. What an incredible and uniquely generous spirit. But apparently that was Amy's nature. Now, Amy often expressed her generous spirit in funny, even quirky ways that begged for attention and some reflection along the way, too. Like there was a time that she left hostess ding-dongs on several porches just to see what the people would do. Or there was a time that she got together with a couple of her friends, and they clipped $101 bills on several trees, again, just to see what the reaction would be and what would happen. Or there was the time that she organized a group of people to stand outside the L station, the elevated train in Chicago, in order to cheer commuters who were arriving home from a long day at work. But the best known of Amy's expressions of her generous spirit was a project that she called The Beckoning of Lovely. You go on the web, you can learn a great deal about what she did, but its culmination was this. At the end of the project some 10 years ago, Amy sent out a YouTube video invitation to people to join her at a downtown Chicago park on an August afternoon. 400 people showed up, and Amy threw a party. Complete strangers danced, they blew bubbles, they handed out flowers to passers-by. Now, you can also find a video of that day on Amy's website, including its conclusion when people began to flip over individual sheets of paper 
to reveal one word each. And I have these words here today, and I want to invite you, as I hold up each one of them, to say them aloud with me. Here's the first one. Make. I'll give the people over here a chance first on this one. Make the most of your time here. I wish I had known Amy Krauss Rosenthal. Back in that New York Times op-ed, Amy did reflect a bit on her life. But if someone had turned to her in her last months and asked, Amy, what do you want to say about your life? How do you reflect on all of it? Did you make the most of your time here? I wonder how she would have responded now, there's another person, much better known to most of us here than Amy Krauss Rosenthal, who also died this year. And we don't have to wonder about how he would have answered those questions. Charles Krauthammer, the extraordinary Washington Post op-ed writer, answered these questions in the final brief sentiments he shared in the newspaper only weeks prior to his death. Now, I don't know that anyone actually asked him any of these questions, probably not, but I certainly discern the responses at the end of his column. This is what he wrote. I believe that the pursuit of truth and right ideas through honest debate and rigorous argument is a noble undertaking. I'm grateful to have played a small role in the conversations that have helped guide this nation's extraordinary destiny. I leave this life with no regrets. It was a wonderful life, full and complete, with the great loves and great endeavors that make it worth living. I am sad to leave, but I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. If someone had actually asked Charles Krauthammer, who many of you know suffered life-changing trauma in his 20s, what would you say about your life? Did you make the most of your time here? You can hear what his answer would have been, a resounding yes. I played a small role in conversations that helped guide our nation's destiny. My life was full and complete with great loves, great endeavors. I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. Kathleen Parker, a colleague of Charles Krauthammer at the Washington Post, wrote a beautiful tribute to him after reading his final column. Simple, simple, but heartfelt words. Anyone reading those words Parker wrote must be thinking the same. I hope that I can say that someday. Now, I doubt Ms. Parker meant to convey that each of us would like to be able to say that we had somehow helped to guide our nation's destiny. But who among us would not wish to say, I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended? If you knew your life was coming to an end, what would you want to say about it? Now, that seems a little daunting. What would you say about your life today? Is there a gap? A gap between what you would say today and what you would like to say? Each of us here this morning, irrespective of age and health, ought to ask ourselves those questions probably every year at this time. Now, if you are an older adult or you have health concerns, you have obvious reasons to think about how you view the life you have lived. And if there is a gap that can still be addressed between have done and can still do, 
Why should you think about such things and begin to act? It's called time. It's called getting it right. It's called peace of mind. It's called living contentedly without a fear of death. And as Charles Krauthammer shared with us, it is this. It is living with the knowledge that I live the life that I intended. What if you're younger? Amy Krauss Rosenthal died at a much younger age than Charles Krauthammer. And yet I strongly sense that she could have said exactly the same things that Dr. Krauthammer said. Amy surely lived the life as long as she could. She surely lived the life that she intended. Those of us who are baby boomers are still young enough to feel we have a number of good years ahead of us. And if you're younger, all the more so. Some of you here today may not even be finished products yet. It's debatable, actually, if any of us really are. You're still figuring out some things about yourself, about your life. If so, asking yourself the questions Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Charles Krauthammer effectively answered can become a transformative experience. A person who believes that he or she has 20 or 30 or 40 or more good and productive years ahead of him or her can answer the questions these two incredible individuals addressed, determine again if there is a gap between have done and can still do and begin to narrow the gap today. These high holidays ought to be a time of self-confrontation, a time of self-confrontation, no matter how old we are. Now, confrontation is not a word we like to use, but it seems to me that it's particularly appropriate in this context today. Most of us slide through our lives with very little attention to what we ought to do in order to live the lives we intended, how perhaps we need to change ourselves or the dynamics of a troubled relationship with someone. If we do honestly think about tshuva at this time of year and we begin to act on it, it usually pertains to someone we have wronged or who has wronged us. And that's good, of course, don't get me wrong. But it is that other confrontation, the confrontation with ourselves that we tend to ignore. Who am I? Have I lived or am I living the life that I intended? There's only one person who can answer. Am I living the life that I intended? A day will arrive when we will no longer be able to ask. No one, not even an older individual, and surely not a young person, knows when. That is why our tradition, both biblical and rabbinic, tells us that the amount of our time on this earth is not only unknown, it urges us to use that time for the purpose for which we intended. In that regard, the psalmist shares so sagely with us and you'll be reminded of these words again when we gather next week. We reach the Easter portion of our service because I know that we have the words there too. The words of Psalm 90. Teach us to use all of our days that we may attain a heart of wisdom in this new year. I pray that we and our loved ones will be blessed in many ways blessed with good health, blessed with well-being, blessed with the psalmist's heart of wisdom, and blessed with insight and a forthright spirit so that we might ask ourselves, am I living the life that I intended? May our answers bring blessings. Amen.